today we will spend a few minutes on the last few slides that on the pressure sensor which we discussed in the previous lecture number 38 and then we will continue on another uh, sensor that is the silicon accelerometers. Okay. So, we will go back to that slide that we have showing yesterday and the topics that we are going to do will be continue from lecture 38 on pressure sensor packaging and testing few slides just a glance through them accelerometer operating principle and types of accelerometers then silicon on insulator based accelerometer a case study we have already discussed the silicon on insulator approach for pressure sensor then we will also discuss surface micro machined comb type accelerometer structure ADXL type which is uh, the proprietary of the analog devices along with the force balance circuit uh, that is the sensor and the electronics. Okay. So, these are the just to go back to the previous uh, lecture we had shown that integrated pressure sensor die or the chip mounted onto a header which is gold plated and you can see that is the glue is on the edges. So, this is the portion where the pressure sensor is present that is below this portion there is a cavity and this is the portion where electronics is present. And as I pointed out already in the my previous lecture there are all these are the bond pads and the bond pads are connected to the post it is also gold plated by means of aluminum wire you bond one end here take the other end and bond it on to other side cut the wire. So, now you can see this is coming out from the other end of this uh, uh, header at as external lead. So, there are a number of these pins are there to which connections are taken. Okay. Now, this is actually the cut away view of the completed device. So, actually the completed device is like this. So, what you saw in the previous slide is cut here so that you can see the inside. Okay. Now, this is the pressure port. So, you have to make you either you can connect a tube straight away into this outside like that and connect it to the place where you want to measure the pressure while testing we connect it to a gas cylinder or because it is done like this for quick fabrication thing what we had to do was use a jig which will just hold on to this the tube is in the jig in this fashion. So, this is actually the metal cap the metal cap is here with a hole the metal cap is here the hole is here and inside the metal cap the die is there to go back and see inside the die is here and okay, the leads are connected from here to here that is the aluminum wire and the leads are coming out here. The wires are bonded aluminum wire bonding is done and then whole thing is put inside a jig which can be which is held in position by means of some uh, arrangement and that jig a tube is connected to that. If you already have a tube connected to this then you can straight away connect the pressure cylinder, cylinder straight into that, but we have to make this arrangement because this was what we uh, got it done to package. Okay. So, while testing you apply the pressure here monitor the pressure by means of a for testing purpose by means of a digital gauge that is the pressure and you see the output voltage from the bridge for a some 10 volts input supply. So, you got about 60 millivolts per bar output from the sensor and it is quite linear even up to 7 bar pressure and the output from the entire sensor plus electronics after amplification of by a factor of 4.5 you have 270 millivolts per bar for 10 volts. You can see at 7 bar pressure it is more than 2 volts of 2 volts output. Okay. So, that is the thing. Then applications I just wanted to just quickly run through this. One of the very important application that is used is the mapping the pressure on the wing of an aircraft which, which is under research. So, under research you may like to modify the shape of the wing etcetera 
to adjust the pressure distribution across the uh, wing. Okay. Then you want to have the pressure mapped all over the wing and for that you need a micro sensor and the packaging of this will not be like this, it will be a flat type of package. So, that it can be kept straight on the on the surface of the wing and you can take leads horizontally. This is one of the applications. Automobile industry for varieties of applications, the air pressure, tire pressure, then you can also measure the level of fuel, fuel in the fuel tank because after all if the sensor is put at the bottom of the tank, you know how much fuel is present. As the fuel level comes down, the pressure experienced by the pressure sensor will go down. So, the pressure of a fluid is rho density into g rho g h, h is height. So, as height keeps on falling, the pressure will fall. So, you can just monitor the fuel level also. Microfluids for flow sensing, you can measure the sense of flow by means of a flow sensor. I will show you how it is done. You require when you when the flow is of the order of uh, uh, microliters per minute is very difficult to measure. You need special arrangement for measuring those uh, uh, flow especially for biomedical applications where you want to monitor the fluid flow in microliters per minute, you have a flow sensing device. I will show in the next slide how it is done. Biomedical applications I pointed this out right at the beginning of my the first lecture. You can use the pressure sensor to monitor the intracranial pressure, to monitor the pressure of the, in the brain when a person uh, meets with an accident the, and undergoes head injury, the, there will be swelling in the brain head and the pressure of the brain in the inside of the brain goes up and uh, there will be severe headache sensed by the uh, patient. This can all apart from this uh, in, uh, accident it can also be a tumor which is present in the brain that also can, can give rise to rise in pressure. That pressure you want to monitor that when you drill a hole put a pressure sensor inside which is biocompatible. You cannot use metal can. So, biocompatible packaging has to be done put it inside the into the intracranial region pressure you can monitor it through the. Okay. So, the fluid can be removed out if the to release the pressure that is what is done in the uh, for monitoring the pressure and controlling the pressure. Okay. Other application is blood pressure when you want to monitor the blood pressure you know you can monitor it in the usual way using a cough, but you say systolic and diastolic, but when you want to monitor very close to the heart when the operation is being done surgery then you have to do insert this into that location. So, and also the pressure near the pump where near the heart will be high compared to the usual 80 by 20. It may be at least 2 to 3 times higher there. So, you want to monitor that that has to be with a micro pressure sensor biocompatible again you may use polymer packaging. Then in oceanography where you want to measure the conductivity temperature and depth you can use the for the depth, depth measurement the package uh, the uh, pressure sensor, but packaging is critical here also because the water at the in the ocean will be very highly corrosive you must have proper package which will not get corroded particularly you can use gold coated uh, material there for that purpose. <coughs> okay. Now, the flow sensor I have given a schematic diagram here this works in the principle same as you measure the current when you have a resistor you apply voltage across that the current flows voltage by current is the voltage by resistance is the current. So, here P 1 is the pressure at this port I can measure it by means of a capacitive pressure sensor or pressure resistive on the beam P 2 is the pressure at the other end of this channel this is a channel fluid enters here comes out through this the pressure the flow is due to the pressure difference. Okay. So, the, because the uh, flow is laminar 
you can use the relation p 1 minus p 2 is delta p that divided by the resistance of the channel is gives you the flow rate like v divided by r is the current. So, this is when it is laminar flow turbulent flow this may not hold good. So, usually these are all very slow movements. So, flow is laminar. Now, p 1 and p 2 can be measured and you have to calibrate it the r in the design you can do it by proper design of the channel dimensions. In a resistor you know that r is rho l by a rho is resistivity l is length a is area of cross section of the resistor. Here l is the length of the channel a is area of cross section of the channel rho is the viscosity of the fluid. So, that you can uh, measure the flow using this concept. So, r is designed to get the particular uh, uh, values. So, in summary in fact of several injury designers may suffer high performance small low power and relatively cheap because you can do batch processing. Parameters important for pressure sensor are sensitivity, nonlinearity, offset voltage, maximum operating pressure and the range of the pressure. These are the specifications all that we have discussed. And we also discussed a case study where micro machine sensors have been fabricated along with electronics by batch process of silicon wafers using SOI approach. Pressure sensors find wide range of applications for industrial, automotive, biomedical, aerospace and defense establishments. In fact, pressure sensors among all the micro system sensor, sensors and actuators, pressure sensors constitute about 60 percent of the micro system market, because it is used in all walks of life. Wherever there is pressure, you need to monitor it, you, must, you need to measure it. So, with that I and close you can have see look through these references one review article which I wrote in 2007 on silicon micro machine pressure sensors contains most of this what I have discussed. Then for the modeling of resistor there is a paper by written by uh, some of my students and colleagues and myself in the transactions and electronic devices. Then the integration with electronics that is given in this paper first paper and also this one which uh, has appeared in the journal of physics. Uh, in 2006, we also had published it in a international conference in uh, Singapore. Okay. Now, we switch gears. We discuss another sensor that is acceleration sensor and we go through how it is processed and how it is designed. Okay. So, the principle I am sure somewhere you have during the course of this uh, series of lectures you have heard about this. The principle is the accelerometer works on the principle of a spring and a mass concept. Spring is anchored onto a reference plane which is uh, which is uh, not which is rigid and other end of the spring you attach a mass. So, Okay. The mass will supposing this entire frame, this and this are the frame, the mass can move with respect to the frame. The mass is attached only to the spring. So, if this mass moves in the upward direction, okay. then due to the inertial force, the mass moves backward. Frame moves up carrying the mass it moves in the opposite direction. The good example of that is if you are sitting on the car suddenly if the car accelerates in the forward direction you are actually the mass attached to the frame of the car where you are sitting so, that's a, okay, that is attached you move immediately to the back. So, car moves forward accelerates you move backward because you are the mass attached onto the seat. So, th if the spring the mass if the frame moves up the frame carries a spring mass system, the spring move the mass moves in the opposite direction. It will move if it will move to such an extent that at steady state, if the acceleration is constant, at steady state state, the displacement takes place. Okay. The force experienced by the mass is force is equal to mass into acceleration, Newton's law. 
Okay. Now, what prevents it from keeping on moving? What prevents it keeping on moving is the spring restoring force provided by the spring. How much is the restoring force depends upon the, how much it is stretched. How much it is stretched depends upon how much is the displacement. So, the restoring force is k spring constant. Okay. Restoring force is proportional to displacement, proportional to constant is k the spring constant. So, the restoring force is k into x and force experienced by the mass is mass into acceleration under steady state conditions when the force is constant you will have under steady state conditions for a given force mass into acceleration is k into x which would imply x divided by if I measure x that is if I measure the displacement by some means k is a known quantity which depends upon the dimensions of the spring and mass is a known quantity depends upon the size of the mass. A is the one acceleration is the one that you want to know. Since mass is known if acceleration is known force is known. <coughs> so, this can be <coughs> either an acceleration sensor or a force sensor. Okay. So, acceleration is k into x divided by mass. So, if you measure x you can measure acceleration and the force. So, that is the principle of the acceleration sensor or the force sensor. Now, for a given acceleration you will get if you get more displacement you say that the sensitivity sensitivity is more. So, x divided displacement by the acceleration is called the sensitivity of the accelerometer. So, you can see that depends upon m by k ratio. So, mass is heavier for a given spring if the mass is heavier if I have a spring like this if I have a mass attached to that okay, if the mass is heavier it will move for a given force okay, for a given force m a is constant therefore, if the mass is heavier for a given system x will be more. Okay. So, heavier the mass more will be sensitivity. On the other hand for a given force and for a given mass m a is constant. Okay. So, if k is smaller x will be more. So, if more flexible spring is, uh, spring is there displacement will be more. To sum up actually sensitivity will be higher if mass is higher or if k is smaller. More flexible spring sensitivity will be more higher the mass sensitivity will be more. Okay. These are the concepts involved here. Now, how do you measure this x? One of the ways of doing that is put another plate here, estimate the capacitance between the mass plate and the frame. So, if the displacement, if the distance between the mass and the plate changes by a distance x, if original distance is d, the new distance is d minus x. So, if x increases, the distance between the mass and this reference plane decreases, capacitance increases. So, you can monitor the capacitor and say how much is that you can calibrate the sensor capacitance as a function of acceleration. So, you will be able to measure unknown acceleration or force by measuring the capacitance. Other way of doing that is piezo resistive. Piezo resistance work wherever the works wherever there is stress when the spring gets stressed stretched there is stress on the spring. So, locate your piezo resistor on the spring. So, if it is located on that if the string spring gets stretched like that the resistance will go up you monitor the change in the resistance you can use a western bridge or a half bridge as I am going to show to monitor this uh, change in the resistance and change in the uh, and the acceleration by that means. Okay. Change in uh, resistance will be related to the stress and the stress will be related to how much the spring is stressed stretched which actually depends upon the displacement. So, as I pointed out approaches to measure acceleration are piezo resistive by integrating the piezo resistor on the spring element. Other one is capacitive 
by measuring the change in the capacitance between the, the mass is sometimes referred to as the proof mass and the fixed electrode between the proof mass this is the proof mass that is called sometimes proof mass and the, the fixed electrode and the proof mass or this mass is also called sometimes as the seismic mass. Seismic as, as all of you may know may be aware it is related to earthquake. The frequency during the earthquake is very very small. You can measure the uh, earthquake uh, that frequency and the force by using the accelerometer vibration of a spring mass system that is why it is called as a that is you can measure very small frequencies. See, it is not just a constant force or acceleration that you are measuring. A continuously you will be monitoring that. If there is a uh, continuous uh, vibration like earthquake, you can monitor that by means of the accelerometer, which can be used right at very, very low frequencies, couple of hertz that range also you can use. <coughs> okay. So, now let us take a look at some of these things uh, structures. Piezo resistive. See, this is the entire, this is the top view of that uh, device. I am showing on the wafer level, not packaged. This is the top view in which there is a groove all round. The white thing is a groove. This is the mass which is supported onto this frame by means of this beam. This is the fi fixed frame beam. This is the mass which can actually, this is the, like this. This is the mass which has a trench all round and it is held by means of a beam like this which is anchored onto the frame. So, this mass can move like that and when it moves this is a beam which is holding it that will experience a stress. You monitor the stress experienced by this beam by putting a resistor there. This is the mass. So, around that there is a trench you can see that here <coughs> the white region. In cross section if I take the cross section here a a dash you can see this is a frame that is the depth of the frame. This is a beam thin beam 10 microns 20 microns depending upon the sensitivity that is required. Thicker the beam stronger or the it becomes uh, rigid thicker the beam more rigid it is. So, the sensitivity will be less. In fact, the uh, spring constant will be proportional to thickness cubed. So, if I double the thickness it will be 8 times more rigid. So, this thickness is very important and also the length of this beam, the length of the beam also will control the rigidity or the spring constant. The spring constant will be inversely proportional to L cubed. Okay. So, if I double the length the spring constant will fall by a factor of 8 2 to the power of 3. So, that is the idea. So, that is the design criterion for here <coughs> and depending upon how much is the stretching the resistance will change. This is a seismic mass you can see this big one the mass and this is attached to this, but since I am taking cross section it looks as if it is a different part if you go around it is attached. So, now the principle is there are two resistors one on the beam one outside the resistance outside on the frame will not change its value. The resistance on the beam will dip will change its value depending upon the acceleration or the force. If the force is downwards okay, from top to towards this uh, uh, plane of the uh, mass the thing will get stretched and this resistor will get stretched as a result the resistance will change, it will increase if it is p type, if it is stretched. Now, what you do is the fixed resistor which is on the anchor and this resistor are connected like together and if you apply voltage between the two, measure the voltage across this variable resistance which is on this spring at the beam. Okay. This is called half bridge. Full bridge will have four resistors, this has got two resistors, you can apply the voltage B in between the one and two terminal between terminal 1 and 2 and monitor the voltage between the terminal 2 and 3 between 2 and 3 you can take the V naught that is the voltage across the resistor that is the calibration okay? that is piezo resistive. 
you can have uh, sophistication on these by putting some uh, you know top cap and bottom cap so that you have got some air or pressure adjusted within this experience by this mass because when the mass moves up and down there will be some damping that damping can be controlled by controlling the air pressure here and also you can provide a bump or bumper here so that so as to it serves as a over range stop mechanism so that if you subject it to more stress it will not deflect more beyond a certain value to ensure that this beam does not break by subjecting to a stress. Okay? So, that is peso raised to Now, capacitor accelerometer. Okay? This is the very good example of capacitor accelerometer. This is the one case study we will study, go through the process and also go through how to design that. So, ultimately what you have here is a spring mass structure. Where is the mass? This square plate is the mass. The size of that in this example what we show is about 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter, but it is a very small mass. It will be that part of uh, uh, it is a few micrograms mass. So, this is the square mass okay, with some holes. I will discuss why those holes are provided. You can make actually the entire plate as without holes, but it has some purpose. Okay. So, that is a mass and where is the spring? Spring in all these microstructures is a beam. So, here you have got this mass <coughs> okay, <coughs> is held by this beam and this mass is separated from this blue line by means of a gap which is about 1 micron. You can see between this pad and this blue there is a 1 micron thick oxide insulating layer, but that oxide has been removed from this mass and this blue color. So, there is air gap of 1 micron between this mass and this blue. Okay. So, this is the this is the beam which serves as the spring and the spring is anchored onto this frame which is rigid through this oxide. You provide this oxide to serve as an electrical isolation between the mass and the substrate which is also silicon. This is silicon, this is silicon, this is silicon dioxide and this is the metal. Okay. So, the idea is you have this silicon mass which is about uh, 10 or 15 micron thickness and size 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter separated from the blue colored region that is the silicon wave silicon by a 1 micron gap. That gap is your design 1 micron or 2 microns okay, with the air gap and this mass is supported by means of the spring which is the beam. The beam is anchored by means of this oxide onto this frame. The oxide provides electrical isolation between the mass and the anchor and this substrate. Okay. Now, you can have a metal contact made onto the surface, the silicon bottom plate and this top plate by putting metal on this. I can this is actually to sense the capacitance. So, when this mass okay, I will just again take this example where this is the mass. Okay and this is the beam. I am showing only four, two beams. Actually, there are two beams here, two beams here. These are the two beams and the anchor is here. You can see that is held like this. The anchor is held here. It is okay. In this case, the gap is between this and this so much, but in the example that we are doing, it is very, very small. The gap is very, very small. So, I have anchored it there. So, now what happens is if there are four springs, four beams, how strong it is depends upon the size of that beam and the mass you know from the dimensions of that area and the thickness and the density of silicon, density is 2.33 grams per centimeter cube, you know the mass. So, if the mass experiences a force in this direction, 
the mass will get deflected. Okay. The spring will also move a bit like this, but it is anchored at the bottom. So, the spring will move like that and the gap between the mass and the bottom plate decreases. So, if the gap decreases, the capacitance increases because capacitance is epsilon 0 because it is air permittivity into area of cross section of the mass okay, divided by the distance. So, if the force is in the direction, the gap decreases and the, and the capacitance increases. D decreases, capacitance increases. Okay. If the force is in the other direction, it will move up. Okay. Actually, as I mentioned, if the entire frame experiences the movement down, acceleration down, the mass will move up. If the frame experiences the movement upwards, the mass will move down. The inertial force is down opposite to the uh, force of the direction of the force. Okay. So, what we are telling is the mass will move down if the inertial force is down. Okay. Now, this is uh, we will go through a technology of this how it is done and how the design is done. Now, the question is why these holes are present there? When the it has one technological issue that we will discuss when we go through technology. The other issue is when this mass is moving down like that, if the mass is fully rigid, this is very uh, this is uh, important particularly in micro systems where the gaps are just 1 micron. So, if the gap is very small okay, if that is rigid and this is 1 micron gap it moves in the direction down in between the two plates there is air or even when the whole, whole system is moving up like that there will be air and because of this air and it moves down the air film between them will get squeezed and it, it gets squeezed it tries to push it back. In the sense there is a force which prevents it from moving down okay, that is called damping. So, it damps the movement of this in this direction in steady state of course, that damping will not come because once it has moved that will depend upon force is equal to mass into acceleration into k into x. But during dynamic conditions, when, it, when the force changes, that movement experiences the damping force, the squeeze film force between the two plates. This has to be taken care. Now, how to reduce the damping? You allow the see now if the plate is like this, the the squeeze the air from between the two has to come up only sideways through the between the two. Now, if there are holes between the two, we will go back to the slide now. So, if there is no hole here, when it moves down, the air has to come only through the edges okay, to let the mass move. Now, if the holes are present, the air can not only come through this, it can come through these holes also. You can precisely adjust the damping coefficient by adjusting the size of the hole and number of holes. This is the another design criterion which is used for designing the accelerometers. So, it is not nearly enough if you design the size of the mass and the size of the spring and the number of springs, more the number of springs, more rigid it is. And notice, so if you this, this it is also in addition to this, it is important to have these number of holes and size of holes incorporated in the design. Okay. Now, here one more point that I would like you to notice is you can use this and support this entire mass by means of one spring or by means of two springs, but you have we provided four. What happens is if the spring constant is k 1 due to 1 which depends upon the length of this beam proportional to inversely proportional to length cubed the spring constant and the thickness of the beam proportional to directly proportional to thickness cube and the width b of the beam okay, divided by 4. So, b into t cube t thickness divided by l cube divided by 4 1 fourth of that is the spring constant. 
if I put 4 of them, it will be 4 times that. So, that is 4 goes off b, b width into thickness cube divided by L cube is the total spring constant. It will become 4 times the spring constant of the 1. You have made it rigid, but more importantly, this particular sensor is used for uh, monitoring or measuring the acceleration only in the z direction like that. So, you need to hold it, you need to hold it. For example, if I have it like this, you, you do not want to that if I have only one, okay, it can experience the acceleration in that direction and move. It can experience acceleration in other directions also like that or like this. So, in order to ensure that the acceleration is experienced only in that direction, you hold it rigidly from all the four directions. So, that it does not wobble like that or like that, it will move only in that direction. So, to ensure that you have four put these uh, flanges or springs or beams in all the four directions. So, now with using one of these sensors, we can measure the acceleration in that direction. If you want to measure the acceleration in that direction in the navigation applications, then you must put a sensor in that direction which can move in that direction okay? and the other direction you would put. So, three different sensors you can mount in different directions oriented in different directions attached onto the frame of the navigation system. Okay? Now, the, the that is the idea. Otherwise, there are also sensors three axis accelerometers with one design you can ensure that the it the sensitive the acceleration is measured in all the three directions. Next thing is to mount it on a single package have it all in three directions measured. Okay? That is the basic idea of the accelerometer dealing with everything. Now, this structure. So, when it deflects up or down the capacitance between this plate and this bottom plate changes and that is monitored by measuring the capacitance between this metal contact and this metal contact. And you notice it is the capacitance change that is coming out to measure that you must convert that change in capacitance to voltage. You definitely need electronics for converting this capacitance into voltage. So, in capacitive sensors you definitely need uh, electronics. Okay, we will come back to this uh, in greater detail after discussing the sensor part. Okay. Now, we will go back to this and also uh, the electrical isolation is provided by this. There will be the capacitance now will be the capacitance between the plate and this bottom plate you will have in parallel with that the stray capacitance which is the capacitance of this uh, pad with respect to the bottom plate. That does not change there is a fixed oxide. So, you do not want to make this pad very large at the same time you cannot afford to make it very small due to technological constraints. So, we will see we will go through technology quickly using silicon on insulator approach we will see why these holes are required for technological purpose. Okay. We have discussed why from the design consideration it is required to control the damping and for technological considerations you cannot make it very small though you would prefer this to be very small to reduce the cap stray capacitance because stray capacitance will depend upon the area of this pad and this pad will be used for bonding wires onto that okay. and this anchor region also should be sufficiently strong enough if it is too weak it may come off from there also. We will see uh, uh, what are the reasons for that. Okay. So, what we will do now quickly is go through that process steps. How is the process step is done? Start with the silicon on insulator wafer. I discussed this portion in my previous lecture <coughs> on in my previous lecture on piezo resistive pressure sensors, I discussed how to realize a silicon 
on this reddish oxide insulator SOI wafer or you can buy commercially also. Commercial wafers are available, uh, okay. uh, smart cut wafers they are called. Soitech is a company which sells this. Okay. You can actually ask for what is the thickness of this uh, silicon layer on the top, what is the oxide thickness because after all the thickness of this top layer will decide how much is the thickness of this mass. Okay. You are realizing this mass using the SOI layer and this oxide between the anchor and this bottom plane is the buried oxide. So, what you do is take this wafer, I am showing it as a square, it will be usually a circular wafer. I am showing one cut piece of that wafer, so that you can uh, go through the process of one device. Simultaneously, num number of devices are being processed. Okay. So, what you do is do a lithography on this and etch this top wafer the uh, green color like that. By lithography, you can etch this what whatever was this color throughout has become like this. Now, you can see you have made holes in that silicon layer by means of this etching and you have defined the beam, you have defined the mass, but this red color oxide is not etched now. There is very good selectivity between the silicon and this oxide. If I use the KOH etching, the oxide does not really get etched much, it is very slow rate at which it is etched or you can use other etchings like TMH, it will not attack silicon dioxide at all. Okay. This is you can do that anisotropic etching or dry etching, reactive ion etching you can do, you can get the entire pattern transferred from the photo mask onto this layer like this. Now, what you have to do is you can see now why these holes are required. You have to remove this oxide from everywhere so that this entire mass spring everything is released that is the surface micro measuring approach is released that is it is released from the surface bottom wafer. You remove this oxide that is H the oxide from everywhere except under these pads that is these four anchor regions you retain that oxide below that. Now, if I do not have these holes which I require of course, for the adjusting the damping, but from technological constraints if I do not have these holes say this is 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter. I have kept this let us say 0.2 millimeter by 0.2 millimeter. By the time if I do not have the hole you can see if I have this mass like that. Okay. If I have the mass when I etch from the top the etching fluid has to enter from here go underneath that and the etch rate of that oxide is very very small may be about 0 0.1 micron per minute. So, 1 millimeter will take several hours to go through that it was it has to go go from here from that side and this side. Now, if I have a number of holes everywhere the fluid can not only enter here it can enter through other portions also there and it can start etching both ways you can see in the diagram more clearly. Here if you see the fluid can enter up to the edges get start etching sideways underneath this plate. If you do not have the holes it will take long time it has to go half a millimeter from this side half a millimeter from this side, but by that time it has gone through some distance you can see this is only 0.2 millimeter. So, by that time you have etched 0.1 millimeter the oxide underneath has etched completely. So, that means this anchor will all will not be will not remain by the time you have etched this uh, this uh, oxide underneath the mask okay, and it will take enormously long time. So, you if you put these holes the liquid is H and is hydrofluoric acid dilute or buffered that can enter here and also it, it can enter through this hole. So, the gap between these can be kept say, say there is about 100 microns. So, by the time you 50 micron from this side 50 micron from this side it has gone through all the way by the time you etch 100 microns this one it has also etched 100 micron here. So, by the time you etch 100 microns the entire thing will be released. That means actually when you etch this underneath this if this is 500 this is about 200 microns okay, 
50 microns when by the time it goes inside from both sides, it will go all around 50 microns. So, it, if it were 200 microns, the anchor will be 100 microns by 100 microns, it will still be held hold in position. So, that is what you see here, just watch carefully. Now, I am subjecting it to etching, so that this red color will go from everywhere, that is oxide is etched, so that this mass is separated from this blue color by 1 micron, except underneath this oxide, there, that is it. The oxide from everywhere has gone and this red color is there underneath. In fact, this red color will not be all through this area, in fact, I have not, I could not show it. The, this will go slightly inside, undercutting will be there by about 50 microns. If this gap is 100 microns, by the time it is 50 microns, it would have released. So, 50 microns will go, undercut will be there, but still this is anchored. Okay. <coughs> that is the reason why you have the hole here, plus you cannot make this too small. If I make this 100 micron, by the time this has uh, uh, h 50 microns, the oxide will be undercut 50 micron from this side, 50 micron from this side that is 100 micron. So, the entire oxide will go. So, actually what will happen will be your uh, mass which is held here, supposed to be anchored here, this, this anchor will collapse and this will gone like that. So, the entire mass will fall down onto the surface you will not have the accelerometer. Okay? That is the thing. Now, you can actually after releasing that, you can put a metal contact onto that, the structure is complete. So, this is, this can be used as an accelerometer or this can also be used as a variable capacitor. That is, it can be used as a sensor or as an actuator. Sensor, senses the physical phenomena, gives uh, some output which can be converted to electrical signal. Actuator uses electrical signal, converts it into mechanical signal. Okay. So, the actuator here will be if I apply, see if I apply voltage between these two plates, there will be electro electrostatic force between this mass and the substrate. If there is electrostatic force, that is always a force of attraction. So, the mass will move down. If the mass moves down, the capacitance between the top plate and the bottom plate will increase. So, if you apply voltage between the two plates, okay, the capacitance will increase. So, that means, if I vary the voltage, the capacitance will vary. You can use it as a variable capacitance or a varactor. This can be used in uh, as a filter in the filter circuit for RF applications. Okay. So, that is the varactor, that is the actuator. But what we are talking of now is the opposite of that, that is the accelerometer, which is a sensor where it experiences the mechanical sensing acceleration and gives electrical output, capacitance output. Okay. <coughs> now, we will go to some small uh, things one has to remember, when you do this K O H etching, see these are all particular planes 1 1 1 lines and 1 1 1 planes which are getting getting etched, but that will not be vertical, that will be what going at an angle guided by the 1 1 1 planes, but this corner will get like that rounded off, if you use K O H etching straight away. That is uh, uh, the problem with this etching, if you have this convex plane surfaces, in this it is concave, the angle is less than 90 degrees or 90 degrees, here the angle is more than 90 degrees. Okay. So, that will be convex, there that will get rounded off. So, if it ground, get rounded off, you can see the beam can get, get etched completely and the entire mass can collapse. So, what you do is you use some tricks like see the beam gets such rounded off there, that is the chemistry involved. You can overcome that by adding the 30 percent tertiary butanol alcohol to this K O H, then I am not going to the chemistry of that, it will not get rounded off, it will get closer to this, uh, uh, closer to this sharp corner, it will not be sharp like this, but still it will not get etched like that. 
alternately you can do a mask design like this, this is what uh, whatever I have said is written there or modify the mask play mask here like this. In the mask instead of providing rounding it uh, square like that, put a projection like that. So, that when it gets etched finally, you get the square pattern like that. Okay. That will be more uh, involved I would prefer to use this etching solution change. So, that you get this etched only marginally. Okay. Now, I will go to the last phase of my lecture today that is on the design analysis. I have shown the mass, the beam, mass of 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter, the beam which is 0.1 millimeter plus 1.15 millimeter and this is a pad which is just 0.2 millimeter by 0.2 millimeter, millimeter that is 200 microns that is 1. Here you can see the spring constant depends upon the width and thickness cubed which you have chosen here as 10 micron and the length cubed. So, three different designs just to see what will happen and you can see the holes also are there. The in this first U Z 1 design the length is 1.15 plus 0.1 this is 1 millimeter by 1 millimeter. If you go to the U Z 3 length is the same beam length is the same, but the mass is made by half. So, in fact you will see later on when we see dynamics the resonance frequency see any mechanical system will have a resonance frequency. If you keep on vibrating it, it will vibrate with certain amplitude, but if I keep on increasing the frequency of vibration when it then the vibration free when you the rate at which you are vibrating it the force frequency of the force matches with the uh, resonance frequency of the system the amplitude will become more that is the resonance frequency. Okay that resonance frequency is proportional to square root of k by m. You saw that the sensitivity is proportional to m by k. I am used here k effective <coughs> because k of one swing is by given by this expression. It is 4 times that k, so k effective is 4 times k. <coughs> okay. Now, what we are comparing is this same length, same length with u z 1 and u z 3 only thing is area you have reduced the mass is proportional to volume into density. Volume is area square uh, the side length into side length a squared into the thickness. So, here if I have reduced this area of the mass what will happen will be the mass will be reduced by a factor of 4 if I reduce it by a factor of 2 the side length is reduced by a factor of 2. So, the area is reduced by a factor of 4. So, the sensitivity will actually increase by a factor of 4, but the frequency of resonance will reduce by a factor of square root of 4 that is 2. Okay. So, this is another dimension where both are changed that is both this, are, this and this are reduced. Let us compare one of them first. The first one is that this one that has got resonance frequency of about 8 kilohertz. See the deflection vibration like that is almost flat till that frequency, then it goes up at resonance frequency. The resonance frequency is given by this formula. Mass is reduced by a factor of 4, okay. the resonance frequency will go up by a factor of uh, by a factor corresponding to that. So, here you can see this mass okay, is in this case just to take this example just let us not worry about the numbers here. The resonance frequency is 8 here in the other case the mass is reduced okay. therefore, the, uh, the frequency has gone up. In the other case mass is reduced let me not double with numbers at this moment. The mass is reduced, frequency will go up, spring constant is increased by reducing the length length. I am sorry, the if you increase the length, spring constant is uh, increased uh, reduced. Okay. 
So, we will just see I am just uh, uh, not grabbing on bo both these things. We will come back to this in our next presentation. What I am trying to point out is by changing the proper design, we will come back to this in our next lecture. By changing the proper design, the mass you can by change, you can change the frequency, you can change the sensitivity, you can change the length, you can change the swing constant. Okay. For example, if I reduce the length, spring constant will go up. So, if I reduce the length, spring constant will go up by this factor. If spring constant goes up, the frequency of resonance will go up. So, between these two, I have reduced that length, therefore, the resonance frequency has gone up drastically. Okay. So, you can see from 8 it has gone to 32. So, that is what we are trying to see here. So, you can use this is this whole thing is to illustrate Maybe I will come back to this uh, uh, again uh, to start with next time. So, that once again we will just go through this quickly right when you are fresh in the beginning of the lecture. So, I have shown the three designs where I can change the uh, beam length. Okay. Here I change only the mass, reduce the mass so that the, the frequency will go up. Here I have not only see here. Here I have not only reduced the mass, reduced the length also. Both increase the frequency drastically. Only the mass reduced, spring constant goes up by some factor. Both mass is reduced, and also the spring uh, the length is reduced. That is, spring constant is increased, the frequency goes up drastically. So actually, I, I will just show you one such. Uh, okay, here this is for the design. Now, you can see the capacitance when you, you can just to, to test it, you can change the voltage across this sensor, apply the voltage between the two here, you can apply the voltage between this and uh, this and see how the much the capacitance changes, that is what is plotted here. So, you can see capacitance versus voltage, stray capacitance 15.1 picofarad. It, when you change the voltage from 0 to 2 volts, the capacitance changes by point, uh, 0.45 picofarads. Very small value it changes. Sensitivity is cor you know, cor correspondingly change that uh, to acceleration, it turns out to be 0.2 picofarads per volt per uh, gravity. I will continue on this more about this acceleration sensor, uh, briefly about this particular sensor, and I will take on the other sensors uh, ADXL in the next lecture. Thank you very much.